Chapter Six of Nutcracker and Mouse King by E. T. A. Hoffman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Sickness. When Maria woke out of her deep and death-like slumber, she found herself lying in her own bed, with the sun shining bright and sparkling through the ice-covered windows into the chamber. Close beside her sat a stranger whom she soon recognised, however, as the surgeon Wendelstern. He said softly, She is awake. Her mother then came to the bedside and gazed upon her with anxious and inquiring looks. Ah, dear mother, lisped little Maria, are all the hateful mice gone, and is the good nutcracker safe? Do not talk such foolish stuff, replied her mother. What have the mice to do with Nutcracker? You naughty child, you have caused us a great deal of anxiety. But so it always is when children are disobedient and do not mind their parents. You played last night with your dolls until it was very late. You became sleepy, probably, and a stray mouse may have jumped out and frightened you. At all events, you broke a pane of glass with your elbow and cut your arm so severely that neighbour Wendelstern, who has just taken the piece of glass out of the wound, declares that it came very near cutting a vein, in which case you might have had a stiff arm all your life, or perhaps have bled to death. It was fortunate that I woke about midnight, and not finding you in your bed, got up and went into the sitting room. There you lay in a swoon upon the floor, close by the glass case, the blood flowing in a stream, I almost fainted away myself at the sight. There you lay and scattered around were many of Frederick's leaden soldiers, broken china figures, gingerbread men and women, and other playthings, and not far off your left shoe. Ah, oh, dear, dear mother, exclaimed Maria, interrupting her. Those were the traces of that dreadful battle between the puppets and the mice, and what frightened me so was the danger of poor Nutcracker when the mice were going to take him prisoner. Then I threw my shoe at the mice, and after that I don't know what happened. Surgeon Wendelstern here made a sign to the mother, and she said very softly to Maria, Well, never mind about it, my dear child. The mice are all gone and little Nutcracker stands safe and sound in the glass case. Dr. Stahlbaum now entered the chamber and spoke for a while with Surgeon Wendelstern. Then he felt Maria's pulse, and she could hear very plainly that he said something about a fever. She was obliged to remain in bed and take physic, and so it continued for some days although, except a slight pain in her arm, she felt quite well and comfortable. She knew little Nutcracker had escaped safe from the battle, and it seemed to her that she sometimes heard his voice quite plainly, as if in a dream, saying mournfully, Maria, dearest lady, what thanks do I not owe you? But you can do still more for me. Maria tried to think what it could be, but in vain, Nothing occurred to her. She could not play very well on account of the wound in her arm, and when she tried to read a book or look at her picture books, a strange glare came across her eyes, so that she was obliged to desist. The time during the day always seemed very long to her, and she waited impatiently for evening, as her mother then usually seated herself by her bedside, and read or related some pretty story to her. One evening she had just finished the wonderful history of Prince Fakardin, when the door opened, and Godfather Drosselmeyer entered, saying, I must see now for myself how it goes with the sick and wounded Maria. As soon as Maria saw Godfather Drosselmeyer in his brown coat, the image of that night in which Nutcracker lost the battle against the mice, returned vividly to her mind, and she cried out involuntarily. Oh, Godfather Drosselmeyer, you have been very naughty. I saw you as you sat upon the clock and covered it with your wings, so that it should not strike loud to scare away the mice. I heard how you called out to the mouse king. 
why did you not come to help us me and the poor nutcracker it is all your fault naughty godfather drosselmeier that i must lie here sick in bed her mother was quite frightened at this and said what is the matter with you dear maria but godfather drosselmeier made very strange faces and said in a grating monotonous tone pendulum must whir 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 this way that way clock will strike tired of ticking all the day softly whir 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 strike cling clang strike clang cling bing and bang and bang and bing twill scare away the mouse king then owl in swift flight comes at dead of night pendulum must whir whir clock will strike cling clang this way that way tired of ticking all the day bing bang a mouse king scare away whir whir prr, prr. maria stared at godfather drosselmeier for he did not look at all as he usually did but appeared much uglier and he moved his right arm backward and forward like a puppet pulled by wires she would have been afraid of him if her mother had not been present and if fred had not slipped in in the meanwhile and interrupted him with loud laughter ha ha godfather drosselmeier cried fred you are today too droll again you act just like my harlequin that i threw into the lumber room long ago but their mother was very serious and said dear counsellor this is very strange sport what do you really mean by it gracious me replied drosselmeier laughing have you forgotten then my pretty watchmaker's song i always sing it to such patience as maria with this he drew his chair close to her bed and said do not be angry that i did not pick out the mouse king's fourteen eyes that could not be but instead i have in store for you a very agreeable surprise the counsellor with these words put his hand in his pocket drew something out slowly and behold it was nutcracker with his lost teeth nicely fastened in and his lame chin well set and sound maria cried aloud with joy while her mother smiled and said you see now maria that godfather drosselmeier meant well by your little nutcracker but still you must confess maria said the counsellor that nutcracker's figure is none of the finest neither can his face be called exactly handsome how this ugliness came to be hereditary in the family i will now relate to you if you will listen or perhaps you know already the story of the princess pearlypat and the lady mouserings and the skilful watchmaker look here godfather drosselmeier interrupted fred nutcracker's teeth you have fastened in very well and his chin is no longer lame and rickety but why has he no sword why have you not put on his sword ah replied the counsellor angrily you must always meddle and make you rogue what is nutcracker's sword to me i have cured his wounds and he may find a sword for himself as he can that's true said fred he is a brave fellow and will know how to get one tell me then maria continued the counsellor have you heard the story of the princess pearlypat i hope dear counsellor said the mother that your story will not be frightful as those that you narrate usually are by no means dearest madam replied drosselmeier on the contrary what i have this time the honour to relate is droll and merry begin begin then dear godfather cried the children 
and the counsellor began as follows. End of chapter 6